Okay, we're back. So I'm going to continue adding some of these details. Now, I do want to stay here that you see a lot of layers and they're not even uh, named or anything. They're just kind of messy. Uh, normally, I don't work this way when I'm uh, doing uh, production work. This is only because I was doing these live in class and to save time, I just made a bunch of new layers. And also, I generally collapse my layers whenever I'm happy with the painting to reduce the, uh, the time it takes to save these things. So, but because these are tutorials, I, left, I kept all the layers on so you can see everything. Okay, so here bunch more details and then here I'm starting to add some indication of light um, because these vehicles are going to battle here so I want this to have a purpose I want these guys to head into here and something's going on here so by having a light maybe it's fire maybe it's explosions there's some kind of artificial light but by adding this you notice it starts to change the composition by having this here this vehicle here and this light here it starts to make this composition quite uh, right heavy. So what do we do with that? We have to balance that out. So that's why I added a little bit light over here. You can see, right? So you got, let me see. Turn this layer on off. Boom, boom, boom. Now you can see that by putting a light here and putting light here, they kind of balance each other out. Uh, if I only had light in one of the sections here, this composition will most likely read a little bit right heavy, and that's not not good because this vehicle is quite big. So and there's a bunch of debris right here. So this composition will tend to fall towards the uh, right corner and making this section here not as strong. Okay, so this white light here really helps with that. And let's see what we did next. Okay, so at this point. I'm happy I added the light. It's got nice contrast, a bunch of values. If you zoom out, it's starting to read quite well. This is when you start adding the uh, second level details. This is the kind of stuff that's gonna make your painting go from a very rough stage like this into something that's somewhat presentable. Okay, so let me get rid of that. Bunk, bunk. Okay. So you know, when I work on these, I generally just kind of work all over the place. If I like working on the vehicle part, I'll start painting those. I'll turn these on and off, right? Correcting some of the perspective, adding some details. And this is a rough painting, so there's nothing in here is very, very tight. But it gets the point across. It, it reads uh, what it does, right? So here's a guy you can see here. I added the guy looking at the camera, which stops with this guy is, is uh, looking that way. This guy is looking here. The direction, see this guy pointing his weapon back at that guy, right? These guys are heading into some kind of thing over here, but these guys are all looking that way. This guy obviously looking at the camera or somewhere over here, right? Um, this is all important to, to, to do because humans like to see what other humans look at. Uh, when you, you know, you're standing on the street and looking at the sky, a bunch of other people are gonna look in the sky as well, right? So we use that to our advantage. So if you want people to look at this vehicle here, then make the people in the scene look at the vehicle. So therefore, everybody looks at this vehicle. Okay? And direction of flow is important. We put a lot of design elements in here that basically says this guy's going forward. No, no, again, these slopes aren't going this way. So you notice, the, you know, it's subtle here, but even these, they curve slightly. They follow this nice smooth curve, even his armor, his gun. Okay, all the shapes I use here follow this flow. Right, his weapon, obviously, and this flow, this weapon points directly to his troops there. Okay, so there is an overwhelming direction of the shapes here, and we look here; it's exactly the same thing. These go this way. See these little struts, these debris. All right, so this composition comes down and hits this slope here and goes this way. You're gonna hit these guys over here, right? This so this creates a point here, which. I could tell a little baby story here, but the general flow of it hits these guys here, and then that's going to bring you back into the uh, composition here. You can see these, they hit at this point, and it's very important that this guy's right in the middle of it that make him look at your subject matter. Okay, so this way we control the viewer's eye, they know what they're looking at. Okay, so let's continue. And at this stage, it's pretty loose. I knew going into this that I'm not going to have time to do a full field uh, painting here. So we do what we can to uh, make this look read. So this layer is just a very simple value uh, uh, lift on the background to make sure this guy actually pops in the front. So you can see I turn on, the, on and off when that happens. Okay. So add a, uh, here we add a little bit more value balance. You know, some stuff are getting a little too dark. So when things get dark, they read as being the front. For example, over here. This leg is actually in front, uh, behind, sorry, behind this barrier here. So I gotta make sure I balance that out. So you can see by turning that on and leaving some of this dark uh, shapes here, it puts this leg now behind the uh, wall. So it creates a layer of separation so that these guys, these guys, this leg is all separated out. Okay, this stage I added some little uh, same vehicles but in the distance. This is very important, just like how I mentioned earlier about creating 3D space. By adding these guys uh, way back here, whoops, where's my brush? Here we go. It creates another sense of space because 
your human eye is quite good at picking up silhouettes. So even though these are not the tightest little drawings back here, uh, most people are probably going to associate this guy with this guy, that they're in fact the same vehicle. And therefore, the brain's going to think, oh, if this guy's this big and that guy is that big, there must be some kind of space here, a couple hundred feet distance separating these two. Yeah. So by just using this little trick, you don't have to do anything. It creates depth for you. That the, 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 you let the human brain take over. So it's like, oh wow, you know, without these, you have no idea how far that distance right here is. Maybe that building's right next to it, right? But by putting this, boom, we just created like an open courtyard or some kind of open street scene uh, that makes the space much much bigger. Okay, and I even added one more here. Uh, to create a little bit of contrast here. So this guy is right in the fire. He pops really well against this building here. And I kind of indicated some kind of capital building. So to give it even more purpose. So maybe they're attacking uh, the capital. And I got some of this inspiration by looking at some of the you know, World War II footages, you know, the uh, footage of uh, Cologne being attacked and these kind of uh, really nice footages that gives inspiration for these type of things. All right, so here I balance the value even more, added some sparkles of fire, put in a little Russian logo, which is cool. Okay. These are just sub detail. These layers barely contain anything. It's just, you know, I put some planes, I think I flew around here, okay? And same with these airplanes, they fly this way. So your eye always goes back to here. Uh, so it doesn't leave the page. You see, it's very hard to leave the page, all right? If, if you go here, oh, it goes back. If, if you go here, oh, it goes back, right? It goes here, oh, it goes back. It goes to this corner, oh, it goes here and it comes back, right? So everything leads the human eye back to your subject matter, okay? So this one here is just fogging those planes out so they're not so, um, in your face, put some highlights on there. They're probably aluminum. It's gonna pick up some nice highlights. This is just some very minor details here over uh, there. And then I'm gonna light up some stuff. This is the kind of stuff I do right before I finish paintings, which is to just add that little sparkle of highlights to bring stuff into uh, pure white, uh, high contrast. So if I sample this right here, it's almost white. You see that on this uh, scale here, All right? White is being here. So this will bring that level of contrast is very important, especially in an entertainment type of um, paintings. It, it makes it fun to, to look at. Yeah. Uh, the, here, I add some debris. You can see here, a uh, little flying stuff and burning things. And this thing will bring a little bit of more life to the painting to give it some energy. Otherwise, it looks very sterile. You know, you have all these guys running around. There's a battle going on. This guy's walking around, creating dust and kicking up a lot of stuff. They're firing guns. Uh, it should feel quite chaotic. So uh, all these little things help the painting come to life instead of having this kind of robotic, uh, sterile, dead painting. Okay? So it's okay to leave even some of this stuff nice and loose. And the last thing I did here is just basically bring a little bit of layer adjustment. You know, because I was doing this uh, calibrated to a project projector, and the projector turns to be very, very dark, uh, you know, most projectors, including the one we have here. Uh, so when I actually looked at it in Photoshop, it's actually really, really uh, washed out, which you, uh, whoops, you see here, right? Really washed out. So I kind of just brought in the uh, level adjuster here. And this is black and white, quite nice. Uh, anything with black and white is very hard to clean up. So I'll put the level 